Hi, in this presentation, I overview how to use Turnitin. Turnitin is a tool that allows you to have students submit assignments, but also check for plagiarism. So to create one, so this is an example of the different one. This is a regular paper submission. Turnitin is very similar, but it functions in conjunction with Turnitin.com. You turn it on by first turning editing on. So once you turn editing on, you'll have all these icons in your page. Then you want to click add an activity or resource, and it is one of the activities. So it is very similar to assignment, but it is a turn it in assignment. It checks the paper against 23 billion web pages, hundreds of other sources, thousands of articles, etc. So it, it really can help catch some mistakes that students are making in their paper development process. We'll have test turn it in. Great. Turn it in activity. Okay. So this is both a required. So you have to they have an asterisk, so you have to fill in the title for it. You have to create a summary for it. Um, and then here you have you know whether you want this to be in the front page and the submission type where you want them to just type text in a box or whether you want them to submit a file. Most people use file upload. But you don't have to. You can also have them use uh, text in box text. Number of parts. This, if, if there are various parts of the assignment, you can select here up to five parts. The size. And then student originality reports. I usually turn this on because it allows students to get better. And that's something that to me is important for them to be able to know what mistakes they're making. And this happens, um, they're available for students to view pretty much right away. I also allow for late submissions usually, but that's again another option. Um, and I tend to allow this as well. So it generates reports immediately, but reports can be overwritten until due date. What that allows them to do is that a student can hypothetically submit the paper that is due Friday, Monday. They can see the mistakes they're making in terms of plagiarism, fix them, and resubmit Thursday or some other time. So it allows them to get better and, and see it as a learning activity or exercise when we have a lot of foreign students that may not be certain of how to cite properly. This is something that we can enable to help them out. I tend to not exclude bibliography or quoted materials. So that will give you a higher percentage of lack of originality but then when you open up the paper to see what they did, you'll be able to yourself assess whether it is just a quoted material, or it is plagiarism, or what it actually is. So it'll mark it, and then you can see if it's actually being cited properly, for example. So that increases the percentage in terms of lack of originality, because it gives you an originality score. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, the student plagiarized, but it is helpful to, to have that off. And then I usually enable grammar check. Why? Because it just gives them additional information. This is not going to impact their grade unless you want them to, but it does check for those things automatically. And it automatically places them in the paper and then the student can also work in imp to improve in their, gra their grammar over time. Um, in terms of grade, that's also, if you have grade categories, you can add it to a, a grade category. In this case, we do have grade categories, so this is going to be a paper and it's going to be worth, let's say, 50 points. OK, so now we click Save and Display. You can also assign it to a, one group if you want to as well by using the grouping and groupings and group sections. OK, so one key part that people forget is that most assignments to s select the date when they're available you do that on the page where we were just at, the settings page. In this case, the dates are here. So you'll have to click on the little pencil and set the dates. Start date today, due date in a week, postmark, um, post date, then to. So I'll leave that that way. It synchronizes with turnitin.com. Um, so they have a week to submit this assignment. I could have changed that to anything else I wanted to. And then when they want to submit a paper, in this case, since I'm the instructor, I can submit a paper for anybody. Um, let's see if I have something. Let's submit something for uh, Ellie. And I'll submit this letter that I wrote earlier today. 
um, letter at submission. So a student will have to click on the part where it says turn it in assignment, they'll have a little turn it in logo. And then after they do that, they'll have to click submit paper on these tabs and they'll be able to, to submit their paper that way. Their paper again is sent to turn it in, comes back with a report. In this case, the similarity score is pending, but it'll give them a, code, a color scale. So if it's green, it's usually fine and it'll show you a percentage and that goes all the way up to red and then you know how plagiarized the paper was. Um, so here it has other comments that you may want to look at as well, whether you want it to be submitted immediately on upload, um, whether you want to use Grademark, a system they have with Internet Info Grades, etc. So it has a couple other options. Let's go to the submission inbox, again, still pending. Um, when the students have their similarity score, they'll have to come here and click on, on the grade or the similarity score, and that's when they can go interface with Turnitin and see their paper and the mistakes they made. This should maybe load up Turnitin. If it doesn't, it's because the paper is not processed yet. Yep, there it is. So it shouldn't show me anything right now because it hasn't yet gone through and processed the paper. But you could add yourself. What well, The reason I wanted to show you this is that you can yourself add uh, so improper citation, for example, and I could drop it there. And so if you wanted to add additional comments for students and um, or just type in a comment and save it as a quick mark, these are quick marks, so you can add more common quick marks that you use and this can facilitate grading. The other thing is that all this is available also through your iPad, so they have an iPad grading feature where it downloads all your papers to your iPad, you grade them, you can annotate with your finger and everything and like do, you know, underline, cross off, do anything you want with your hands and um, it's pretty neat in, in that way. Um, and then it syncs to your account and then it, up, it updates the grades for them. So you can use the grading features within your iPad as well. Let's go to originality. I think by now, okay, so this turns on the, the grammar, but, um, but it's, in, it's in Spanish in this case, so it says that the grammar part didn't work, uh, which is fine. So we'll go to originality, and apparently I wrote, this is just the letter I wrote, so, um, but apparently the way I phrased that sentence showed up as being not original. Um, great. Um, but that's in this case, so there's 8% similarity and it shows me where. So the nice thing is you can click and it tells you where that is and you can actually open up that source and read it yourself and be like, no, that's a false positive. He didn't really pay your eyes anything. That's just how he constructed that sentence. Uh, peer mark allows people to grade each other. You can upload rubrics to turn it in. And use that rubric to um, to grade students too. So and rubrics can be exported and, and imported. Um, so here's where the rubric construction tool is. You can create a rubric, and um, so this is a rubric that is already there for social work. Uh, so that can be a way to enhance the grading features also of Moodle by using a rubric within the assignment. That's pretty much it. That's uh, this is turning in. Um, I'll also, I guess, I'll show you quickly. So eight percent. So it's blue. Um, so now it has been processed. Great. Um, so I'll show you two things. First, if we go back to the course site, this is how it looks. It has a little turn it in icon. So wherever that's located in a course, that's where the turn it in assignment is. And Next, if you want to hide it for students, you can, this all still applies, so remember to set the dates inside the assignment. And finally, um, if you go to turnitin.com, I can show you a little bit more about what they do, basically. If you wanted to, if you use the iPad for grading, you can actually leave audio comments, uh, which is great, and you can um, use your finger to, to mark as well, um, or a stylus if you have one. So... Let's see, um, it has so many overview. Hmm. 
can't really originality check. Okay. So just in the originality check. So now it's 40 billion web pages. So it used to be 23 billion web pages. So this has just, just grown and grown. 300 million student papers and 130 million academic book and publication. So their database is also going to continuously grow. Just a year ago, that was almost half of that number in terms of web pages and a lot less in terms of academic books and publications. So they have done a lot to expand and grow. And that's something that we can feel comfortable in trusting them to find a lot of the plagiarism. In other languages, it's going to be harder uh, for them to get there, but they're working on it. I mean, that, that, that one that I submitted pulled up a sentence in Spanish, so we can see that they're actually um, investing a lot in extending their database. And they have other tools, like I mentioned. They have also Peermark and Grademark. And Grademark allows you to leave comments, um, just highlight, underline, um, and help them improve their grammar as well. Peermark is the least used one, but it's also helpful in that students can grade each other um, and have anonymous reviews. And you can also have all this within your iPad as well. And hopefully we'll have it before long also in Android devices. Thanks.